Good evening and welcome to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for uh, Sunday, April the 24th. I'm Mark Syme, the minister here at the Northfield Church. We will sing uh, four songs. We will observe the Lord's Supper and I will have a message for you that I hope will be somewhat inspiring and uh, will be challenging for you to uh, perhaps meditate upon to see what you can get from it. Uh, we are singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. If you do have that book, you can turn to the pages, and I will give you the name of the song so that if you don't have the book, you can Google the song to sing along with us. The first song is number 509. It is entitled, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story. 509, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story. <clears throat> I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story. The wondrous story of the cross of the Christ who died for me. Who died for me. Sing it with. Sing it with the saints in glory. The saints in glory gathered by gathered by the crystal sea. I was lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray. Through his loving arms around me, drew me back into his way. Yes, I'll sing. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story, the wondrous story of the Christ, of the Christ who, died who died for me. Sing it with, sing it with the saints in glory, the saints in glory gathered by, gathered by the, the crystal sea. He will keep me till the river rolls its waters at my feet. Then he'll bear me safely over where the loved ones I shall meet. Yes, I'll sing. Yes, I'll sing. The wondrous story. The wondrous story. Of the cross. Of the cross. Who died for me. Who died for me. Sing it well. Sing it well. The saints in glory. The saints in glory. Gathered by. Gathered by the, the crystal sea. sea. Turn to number five. 580. 580, the title of this is The Joy of the Lord. 580, The Joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Number 763. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. After this song, we'll observe the Lord's Supper. Oh, Master, let me walk with thee. 
in lowly paths of service free. Tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the bread of care. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the way would be to stay and guide them in. Hope that sends a shining ray far down the future's broadening way in peace that only thou canst give with me, O Master. Let me live. We come to the time in our service where we observe the Lord's Supper. We are commanded to do this in the scriptures each first day of the week. It is one of those things that we do when we worship together on the first day. Acts chapter 20 verse 7 reinforces that when it succinctly says, they gathered together on the first day of the week to break bread. We do this in remembrance of the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us. We do this as we follow the master plan of God, who planned this from the beginning. And as in the Old Testament, sacrifices were made, uh, animals were sacrificed, and uh, even even grains were sacrificed. And... Um, the important part of the sacrifice and the symbolism there was that those that sacrificed was, were to give up their best. Well, Jesus was the best, and God saved the best for last. He ended the sacrifices of animals. He ended the sacrifices of grain. And with Jesus' sacrifice, we had the perfect sacrifice. We had the Son of God laying down his life that we might live. So as we gather about the table, there are two emblems that we uh, partake of, the bread, the symbol of his body, and the fruit of the vine, the symbol of his blood. Let's pray over the bread. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that Jesus was willing to give up his body, that, uh, that the sacrifice that you had planned all along would come to fruition. Bless us as we partake of this and Help us to remember the body that writhed in pain on the cross, that he gave up his physical life, that you and I might live. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And we think of the blood that Jesus shed, the life-giving fluid that flowed through his body, just like it does through ours, just like it did through the bodies of those bulls and uh, those animals that were sacrificed previously. But in this sacrifice, Jesus give, gave up his life-giving blood in knowledge that that would be the blood of our salvation, that would be the blood that washed away our sins. Let's pray for the food of the vine. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that Jesus was willing to come to earth, that he was willing to give up himself, that he was willing to shed his innocent blood for us. As we take of this cup, let's remember that, and let's remember that it is only through this blood that we can have forgiveness of sins. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And now we come to the part of the service, uh, not connected to the Lord's Supper, but connected to what we are also uh, uh, 
instructed to do on the first day of the week, and that is to lay by and store that which uh, we have been blessed. And we have so many wonderful examples in our New Testament of those who laid by in store, those who gave beyond their means. And uh, we pray that uh, as we give, that we will remember that, that we will remember that not only does uh, God instruct us to give, but he wants us to be cheerful about our giving. And he wants us to understand that all good and perfect gifts come from above. Let's pray for the giving. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the opportunity to give. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, that as we give, that we will remember uh, those uh, less fortunate than us. Help us that as we give, that uh, uh, our church will be just stewards of the monies that are collected so that uh, these monies will enhance our ability to bring the loss to you and to be benevolent to those that are in need. Help us to give with an open wallet, with an open heart, with an open mind, and with gratitude. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And our last song before the lesson is number 51. Five one. The title of this song is Father of Mercies. Father of Mercies. Number 51. Father of mercies, day by day, my love to thee grows more and more. Thy gifts are strewn upon my way like sands upon the great seashore like sands upon the great seashore father of mercies god of love whose gentle gifts all creatures share the rolling seasons as they move proclaim to all thy constant care proclaim to all thy constant care father of mercies may our hearts ne'er overlook thy bounteous care but one thy father's hand impart still owns in grace full praise and prayer still on in grateful praise and prayer i hope uh, the lord was satisfied with our singing i hope that he was praised and i hope that uh, each of us uh, put our hearts into our singing this evening if you were there this morning, uh, you heard that uh, the title of the lesson uh, for the evening service would be The Gift of God. All right, The Gift of God. If we turn to the book of Revelation and we look at chapter 21 and verse 3, here are the words of the Revelator. Revelation 21, 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Beautiful verse. Beautiful, beautiful verse. Uh, I might uh, contend this evening that life is all about the seeking, isn't it? Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33, contains one of the famous 
passages in the Bible that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We can't seek the kingdom without seeking the king. And so whatever, and I'll call them for the want of a better term, whatever secondary blessings flow from God, we ought to seek none of those as diligently as we seek God himself. Now, you know, we go to God and we ask God for the blessings of life. We go to God and petition God on behalf of people who uh, need our prayers, people who are ill, people who have spiritual uh, ills. And when we offer our prayers, which we are to do. But, and here is the, the crux of the lesson this evening. We must be those who seek God primarily for his sake. Why? Because he is our God and we long to give ourselves to him. And so we seek so that we will find. We seek the kingdom and moreover, we seek the king of the kingdom. Now, there are some things that we need to put behind us if we are to do this. And they are things that unfortunately creep into the psyche of man. Among those are selfishness and manipulation. Selfishness and manipulation are no where um, out of place more than in our relationship with God. We can't seek God for selfish motives and we can't seek God hoping that uh, we will be able to manipulate him. Why? <laughs> because it simply doesn't work. Okay, it simply doesn't work. There wasn't a selfish bone in Jesus' body. And Jesus never tried to manipulate people. He preached the truth to people. He exhibited his power through the miracles that he did. He taught in wonderful parables. And he was giving, as he said he came to serve and not to be served. If we're only concerned with the other things that God gives us, we'll miss out on the greatest gift of all. God's chief gift to those who seek him is himself. We seek God because we want him. And we want to be a part of him. And we want him to be within us. So, when we think about gifts, what are the two things that we think about? Uh, it's not a hard question. There are two things that we think about when we think in terms of gifts. We think of the giver and the gift. And so when we speak of the gift of God, we should think of God both as the giver and the gift. That's magnificent, isn't it? God is the giver and he also is the gift. If we turn to the fourth chapter of the book of John, we have this wonderful story about the Samaritan woman at the well. And uh, he asked the woman uh, for a drink. And um, the Jews didn't have dealings with the Samaritans. So uh, this was an out of the box thing. And here's what Jesus said to her. This is in verse 10 
of John chapter 4. If you knew the gift of God, get that? I'm, I'm working my title in here. If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. Now, the woman wasn't exactly sure what Jesus was talking about. And he said, you know, the well is very, very deep. You don't have anything to reach down into the well with which to draw water out of. And then Jesus said, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. That's the water out of the well. But whoever the drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst but the water that I will give him, by the way, that's the gift. The water that I will give him will become to him a well of water springing up to eternal life. We're getting toward what the gift of God is, aren't we? He's talking about the gift of eternal life. Let's look at how the Apostle Paul addressed this in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. He said, and again, look at the terms, the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus had, uh, I'm sorry, the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right, so... The Apostle Paul cuts to the chase, doesn't he? He says, here's the gift. God is giving the gift. And the gift is eternal life in Christ Jesus. We have the gift and the giver. We seek God through Jesus Christ. And we get the gift. Or at least we get the opportunity to obtain the gift. Again, Jesus went to the heart of the matter on the night in which he was betrayed. In John chapter 17 and verse 3, he said, This is eternal life, that they may know you, talking to God, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. It goes back to the woman at the well, doesn't it? Jesus said he would give living water. When Jesus gave up his life for us, he gave us the living water. And he gives us life by giving himself. We just observe the Lord's Supper. And in the Lord's Supper, we have Jesus giving of himself. Now, we pray to God for other blessings to flow from God. And I believe they only flow from God when the asker of those blessings has a proper relationship with God. But that relationship itself is God's greatest gift to us. The relationship we have with God, that's our greatest gift. You know, it's, it's like a, it's like the people in your life that you love. You know, the, the people who are, who are a part of your very fiber. And those people are, are great gifts to us but they pale in comparison to the gift that God gave to us that was Jesus Christ. If we have God and his son, we have the highest thing to which we can aspire. Look at the words of 2 John, verse 9. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. You see, the wonder is that God gives us his word and he lets us know that we are to abide in this word. And if we abide 
in the doctrine of Christ, we have both Jesus and we have the Father. Remember, uh, it's all about the seeking. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom. Seek the king. And seek him with the understanding that he can be found. And then when we find him, it's up to us to develop an intimate relationship with him. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Now, with that in mind, even when we, and, and, and sometimes these, this message is so high that it's, it's, it's difficult to appreciate. Even when we try to appreciate what God should mean to us, we can hardly grasp of the glory and the grace of a God who would give himself to such a people as we are. You know, we know that God sent Jesus into the world at just the right time. God sent Jesus into a sinful world so that there would be a conqueror of that sin. But you know what? It would take a hard heart to not be moved by Jesus' very simple words of John chapter 14, verse 23. He says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. If this seems too good to be true, <laughs> it almost is. Only God can make this true. Why? Because God is the God of goodness. God of your goodness. Give me something for you are sufficient for me. I cannot properly ask anything. I cannot properly ask anything less to be worthy of you. If I were to ask less, I should always be in want. And you alone, I have my all. As soon as we understand that in God we have our all, we understand the gift of God. We understand the living water. We understand the forgiveness of our sins through the glory and the grace of Jesus Christ. We see the mansion above with the room that's reserved for you and I of eternal life. These are the gifts of God when we seek, when we seek the kingdom and we seek the king. And we should never ever put anything in front of this but into developing a relationship with God and relationship with his son which leads us to eternity and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people God himself will be with them and be their God is God your God have you given your life over to God? See, he wants that. He wants us to seek him out and to find him. And then when we understand that, he says, you need to obey me. If you want to partake of that living water, if you want to live eternally with me, you have to obey the plan I have put into effect. You have to understand that Jesus Christ is my son. That Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. That he came and gave up his life that we might live. That the life that we used to live, we can't live anymore. 
And if we have done things that we're ashamed of, we need to repent of those things. And finally, God is very succinct through Jesus Christ. Even in the Great Commission, before the church was formed, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That same holds true in that great sermon that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of the book of Acts. And so if you haven't developed that relationship with God, it's because you haven't come to God in obedience through Jesus Christ. If that's your wish this evening, this is your invitation to come to him. Get in touch with one of us and we will be at your beck and call to help you to start that relationship that you need to have with the Lord if you are to receive the gift of God. As we close, let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the truth of your word, these nuggets of wisdom that we find that help us to, to move our lives in the right direction. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to lead the godly lives that you would want us to lead so that we indeed can drink of the living water, so that we indeed can live with you forever because Jesus paved the way for us. We know this only comes because you are so glorious and you have bestowed your grace upon us. Help us to be worthy of uh, you, dear God, that we might always want to have a, just a wonderful, loving and warm relationship with you. Be with us through this evening. Be with us and help us to look forward to the next time that uh, we get together and help us to take the message of the evening into our hearts and perhaps meditate on it so that uh, we will become better for having heard it. Be with us through this evening. Be with us always. Bless us, comfort us. And we just pray for that gift. It is in your son's most holy name that we pray. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. As far as me.